So let's talk about how we can create a native module for iOS in React Native. We're going to be using Swift to create our module and we're going to start with a very simple module. So the first thing we need to do is create a new React Native project. So I'm going to say npx React Native in it and let's call it Native Module iOS. Go ahead and install React Native. Once the project is ready, let's cd into our project folder. And though we've used vanilla React Native, we can still use Expo Run iOS to run our app. Once our app is ready, let's open up our project in VS Code. I'm just going to get rid of everything that we have in our app.js and instead I'm just going to pull in a functional component and call that app. So as we can see, we have an empty app here. In order to create your native module, we have to open up our XC workspace class, which is in the iOS folder in Xcode. So I'm going to right click our iOS folder, reveal in finder, and then I'm going to open up the XC workspace file. As we can see here, we have native modules. Make sure you go into the signing in capabilities and here you select a team. Now in our native module iOS folder, I'm going to right click it and create a new file. Let's create a new Swift file. I'm going to call that counter. Make sure that the target here native module iOS is selected and click on create. The moment you create your Swift file, it's going to ask you to configure an Objective-C bridging header. Since we're going to be mixing both Swift and Objective-C, we need this bridging header in order to expose the Objective-C files to Swift. So let's create it. And it's going to give a default name to this bridging header. Make sure to not change this file name because that's the name that's registered with the app. If you want to change it, you can go into your native module iOS, go into the build settings. Here, look for Swift compiler. And within the general section, you'll see the Objective-C bridging header here. So if you rename your file here, make sure to update it here. Now let's open up our bridging header. And right on top, we'll have to import something in. In Objective-C, we have to use the hash import. And then we'll pass in react forward slash rct bridge module dot h. Let's jump into our counter file. Here on top, we have the foundation framework imported. It gives us the building blocks that we need to work with iOS. So within our counter class, I'm going to create a new class called counter. And just like we use extends in React Native or React, here we'll use a colon and pass in the parent class NS object. Above this counter class, we also need to pass in the at followed by the objc syntax to make sure that the classes and functions are exported properly to the Objective-C runtime. Along with this, we pass in the name of our particular class that we want to expose. So here we're going to pass in counter as well. Now within our counter class, let's just create a simple function. In Swift to create a function, you use the func keyword and let's call this method increment. Again, since we're exposing this to Objective-C, we have to pass in the syntax on top of it. Inside this, I want to increase the variable's value by one. So I'm just going to create a private variable in our class. So we'll say private var, call that count and set that to zero. Within the increment method, I'll just say count plus equal to one. And then I'm just going to print out the value of count here by using the print syntax. So we've created our Swift module. The reason we were able to write Swift is because we used a bridging header and then we exposed our Swift class using the syntax here. But ultimately, we need Objective-C in order to expose our method to React Native. So for that, we need to create an Objective-C file. So here in our native module iOS, I'm going to create a new file. This time, I'm going to create an Objective-C file. I'm going to call that counter as well. Create an empty file type and click on Next. Again, make sure native module iOS is selected and click Create. Now within our counter.m file, I'm going to use Import again. And here we'll pass in React followed by our RCT bridge module. This will give us access to the macros that we need in order to expose our methods to React Native. And this should obviously be import. Next here, we need to say interface. And then we'll say rct underscore extern underscore module. And pass in our module name, which is counter. And along with that, we need to pass in our super class, which is the NS object. So the rct extern module is a macro. A macro is nothing but a fragment of code. It's going to expand out to do a lot of other things which is not visible to you right here. Instead of the colon here, we need to pass in the at symbol with end here to indicate that it ends. So we've created our counter module. We've passed that module to React Native using this macro here. But that's not enough because we also need to expose our method. So within the interface and end, let's pass in another method known as rct underscore extern underscore method. Within this, we'll pass in our method name, which is increment. 
So now we've exported our module and our method and we can access it within our React Native app. So I'm just gonna rebuild our app in Xcode using command B. Once it's built, I'm gonna just change the simulator here to our iPhone 13 simulator, which is already open. And then I'm gonna rerun the app from Xcode. So our app is running and now we should have access to our native module within our React Native app. Just disregard this warning that we're getting for now and let's open up VS Code. And here, let's go ahead and import in our native module by saying import native modules from React Native. Then what we'll do is we'll just log out our counter module by saying console.log native modules dot counter. And along with that, we'll also call our increment method. So we'll say native modules dot counter dot increment. Let's save that out. Let's just debug our app. So I'm just gonna debug with Chrome. So as we can see, our native module has been logged here. It has this increment method that we created. The get constants method is there by default, but we're not seeing our count logged here. Let's head back to Xcode. And if we just open up the terminal here, though we should have had a better log message, you'll see this one printed here. So basically, Xcode has logged this message on our native side, but we don't see it on our JavaScript side. So we need a way to actually pass this to JavaScript so that we can show it in our app. But first, let's just address this warning that we were getting regarding the requires main queue setup. So this method, it is static method, returns a Boolean value. So as always, we'll use objective C to expose it. And then we'll say static function requires main queue setup. It returns a Boolean value. And within this, we'll return true. When you set it to true, you're telling React Native that you want your module to be initialized on the main thread before any JavaScript code executes. By setting it to false, you're telling React Native that you're okay if your module gets initialized on the background thread. So there are two main cases when you'd want to set it to true. First case is when you're exporting some constants from your module and you want them to be available at initialization time. The second use case when you'd want to set it to true is when your module creates some form of UI using the UI kit. So now that we've set it to true, let's actually export some constants. So our function is gonna be called constants to export. It returns a dictionary with a key of type string and the data type can be any. Within this, we can return values. So let's just return an initial count with a value of zero. As always, we need to pass in objective C here and we can save that out. I'm just gonna rerun the app and in the meantime, open up Visual Studio Code. Within this module, we were calling the increment method here, what I'll do is I'll just say console.log native modules dot counter. And then we can use this get constants method to get our constants. Let's save that. Let's just open up our debugger. In our debugger here, if you remember the get constants method was available by default. Now that we've set up constants to export, we can access our initial count constant by using the get constants method. And we can see it here in our log. So now that we have that out of the way, let's head back to actually getting this print count back in our JavaScript side. So as of now, it's printing it out in the Xcode terminal, but we need to pass it back to JavaScript. For that, we'll use a special type of callback. Within this, we'll pass in a parameter, call it callback, and it has to be of type RCT response sender block. So it tells us the type of a block that is capable of sending a response to a bridged operation. Since objective C doesn't have named parameters, and we're passing in only one parameter, we pass in the external parameter name as an underscore. Now here, instead of the print, we'll actually use callback and pass in our count value, but we need to pass in an array. So let's open up square brackets and pass in our count value. Back in our counter.m, where we were passing an in increment, we need to change that to accept a parameter. So we'll pass in a colon. The data type we want to pass back is RCT, response sender block, and the parameter is callback. Let's save that out. Let's just build our app again. Let's run it on our iPhone and open up Visual Studio Code. Now we're getting an error here that tells us that counter.increment was called with zero arguments, but expects one argument. So here where we pass an in increment, we can actually get the value of the callback by accessing value here. And then we can just print it out by saying console.log. The count is, and let's pass in our value. Let's just save that out. If we reload the app, open up our debugger. As we can see here, we're getting the value back now. So another common way of accessing data is using promises. Let's see how we can actually return a promise from our native module. 
So head back to Xcode and let's create a new method in our counter file. This method we'll call decrement to decrease the value of our counter. So let's say function decrement. Now within this, when we're using a promise, we need one successful path and we need one error path or a failed path. So we need to either resolve the promise or we need to reject the promise. So for the first parameter, again, we need to pass in an underscore and here we'll call it resolve. And the data type is going to be of type RCT promise resolve block. As we can see here, it tells us block that bridge modules used to resolve the JS promise waiting for a result. And for the second parameter, let's call that reject. And again, it's going to use an RCT promise reject block. Now here, we'll just do a bit of checking. We'll check if the count is equal equal to zero. Then we'll print an error and return an error message. So let's just create an error by saying let error is equal to, we have to use the NS error class. For the domain, we'll just pass an empty string for the code of say 200. And for the user info, we don't need to pass any data as of now. So let's just pass back nil. Then we can call reject. Within this, we can pass in our error name. So let's just say error underscore count. Here we'll say count cannot be negative. And lastly, we'll pass in the error. If the count is not zero, then in the else block, we can just resolve it by saying resolve and pass back and pass back the count value. And here we should actually pass in count minus equal to one as well. Now let's open up our counter.m and export this method. So we'll say rct extern method. Our method name is decrement. The data type it takes is rct promise resolve block. We'll call it resolve. It takes a parameter resolve and the second parameter is called reject. And it takes the rct promise reject block data type and the parameter is reject. Let's save that out. Again, let's rebuild our app. Let's rerun it. Let's open up Visual Studio Code. Now here, we just go ahead and add a button, give it a title of decrease count. And in the on press, we'll call our decrement method, which we'll just create. And let's close that out. Make sure to import a button here. And let's create our method. So we'll say decrement. And we can say native modules dot counter dot decrement. And then we can use the then syntax to catch the result. And here we'll say console.log result. If there's any error, then we can catch the error using the dot catch. And we'll say console.log error.message and error.code. Let's save that out. Let's just open up our debugger again. As you can see, the count is one because it was increased by one when the app opened up. Let's decrease count. We we'll see the count becomes zero. And if we decrease it again, and we see we get that error back along with our error code from our promise. If we wanted, we could have also done this using async await. So we can mark this method as async. And then here we can open up a try and catch block. Let's move this into our try block. Let's wait for the result by saying var result. Console.log the result here. And let's catch the error within our catch block and print it out. So I'm just going to paste that in here. Get rid of this. And obviously we need to pass in a wait over here ahead of our native modules to wait for the result. Let's save that out. Let's open up our debugger again. So here we can see the count is one. If we click on decrease count. We get the count is zero. We decrease it again. And again, we get the error count message. So the last thing we'll see is how we can actually subscribe to native events from the JavaScript side. So up until now, we were extending the NS object class for our counter class. Instead of that, we'll extend a different class called RCT event emitter. In order to access this class, let's open up our bridging header and import in another class from react called RCT event emitter. Let's save that out. Now, if we head back to counter, we see that error goes away, but now we're getting two other errors, which are asking us to override these existing methods because they already exist in the RCT event emitter class. So here I'm just going to override requires main queue setup. And I'm also going to override constants to export, but the constants to export method actually needs a hashable key type. So here I'll have to change this to any hashable. Obviously this is beyond the scope of this tutorial to explain that, but it's just a hashable type for the key of our dictionary. So now we have no errors and now we can go ahead and send out events from our module. So what we'll do is when the counter increments, we'll send an event by saying send event. We need to pass in a name. Let's call that on increment. 
and the message that we pass back is going to be count, increased, and pass in the count. Similarly, for our decrement, we'll say send event with name. Let's call that on decrement. And the message we'll pass is count decreased and we'll pass the count. Now we are sending these events back, but we also need to declare these events that we're sending back. So we need to add another method here, which we need to override in the RCT event emitter class. So we'll say override function. It's called supported events. Within this, we can pass back an array of events that are supported. So we'll say return. And the ones we've created are on increment and on decrement. Back in our counter.m file, we'll also have to change this module class because we were passing NS object earlier. Let's change that to RCT event emitter now. And let's go ahead and import that in here as well. So I'll say import react forward slash RCT event emitter dot h. And we see that error goes away. So let's build this out. Let's run our app, head back to Visual Studio Code. Now here on top, I'm just gonna comment out this code we had written earlier. And in order to set up our listener, we need to pull in our native event emitter that's available from React Native. Then let's go ahead and set up our counter events by saying const counter events. And we'll set up a new native event emitter. And within this, we'll say native modules and pass in our counter module. Now within our app, let's create a use effect hook. Within this, we'll say counter events dot add listener. The listener we want to add is called on increment. And we want to get the result from that. We want to console dot lock that out. So we'll say on increment received. And then print out the result. Similarly, we'll set up the on decrement event. So here, let's pass in on decrement. And here we'll make that on decrement received. Within the return statement, let's remove all the listeners. So we'll say counter events dot remove all listeners. And we don't have any dependencies for this. And we'll save that out. Now let's go ahead and add another button. This is going to increment our count. So I'm going to say increment. Let's set up this method as well. I'm going to duplicate the decrement method. Paste that here. Let's just rename that to increment and save that out. Here, let's also change the title. Let's just reload the app. Let's open up our debugger again and let's go ahead and test this out. So if you increase the count, we see we get an error here right now. That's because here the increment uses a callback instead of promises. So let's remove this. Let's remove this and get the result here. Let's just reload the app back in our debugger. Let's increase the count. As we can see, we're getting the one count which we're printing out from our increment method. And then we're also getting this on increment received, which is from our event emitter. Let's decrease the count. And we can see the count is zero, which is coming from our decrement method and our on decrement received event is coming from our event emitter. So that brings us to an end to the introduction to creating native modules in iOS. In future videos, I hope to create a slightly more complex module that'll be useful in our app.